Hey everyone, and welcome to The Way Kids. My name is Makila, and today I have my friend Janelle with me. Hi. We're gonna do something all together. So if you can, can you stand up? And we are gonna play a game, maybe you've heard it before, Trust Fall. What's gonna happen is if you have someone with you at home, team up. If not, you can ask your parent if they're available. If not, no worries, you can watch us do it, and maybe someone will do it with you later. Okay, so you go like this, and I'm gonna lean back as far as I can. And Janelle is going to catch me. All right, on the count of three, let's do it. One, two, three. Woo! Wow, well done. Thanks, Janelle, for catching me. Of course. Here's an interesting thing about trust. Trust goes both ways, meaning I had to trust that Janelle was going to catch me, but also I, she had to trust me that I was gonna actually fall back and trust her and fall into her arms. And I wasn't gonna trick her by not falling back or maybe falling off to the side or something. Today in our Bible story, we are going to hear about when Jesus rose from the dead and went to go see the disciples, his friends, and share the good news. When it comes to Jesus though, we might be unsure. We might be scared to trust him because there's so much we can't see, hear, or feel directly. So how do we know we can trust Jesus? because the Bible tells us that we can. All throughout the Bible, we can find stories that show us how much Jesus loves us. He said he would die on the cross for us and would rise again, and he did. Let's hear more about this from the story from Grow TV. Hi there, old chicken nuggets, me Carl. Hello and welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow. Hosted by Carl, where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Pro TV. Oh, thank goodness y'all are here. Y'all are sat for sore eyes, <laughs> except for you. <laughs> Just kidding. Hi. But for real, I've been missing y'all so much. You wouldn't believe what the past couple of weeks have been like. Now, as you remember, for the past month, I've been able to jump inside the stories in the Bible. Like, actually in the Bible. Pretty cool, right? Well, that's what I thought. Well, usually when I'm done reading, I go back to my normal room, but last week, I couldn't go back. And guess what? I still can't go back home. I'm stuck in the Bible. I'm not going to lie. It's been a really weird time for me. I mean, at first it was pretty cool because I found a really big crowd and got some free fish and bread. Then I got to see a talking donkey oh, and, and a talking snake, which seemed kind of suspicious if you ask me. Then I decided to go relax by the water for a bit, and guess what? A huge fish spat out a guy named Jonah! And if that wasn't weird enough, I was then in Egypt taking in all the beautiful scenery, and then some guy named Moses made a bunch of frogs show up. And you know how scared I am of frogs. <coughs> so yeah. You can say I'm having a pretty rough time. I just don't know what to do, you know? And to make matters worse, it's my half birthday. Not my real birthday, but like the halfway point of it. Hence, a half birthday. It's my half birthday. Still a long ways off, but I always celebrate with friends. And I can't be home now because I'm stuck. Hey there, halfway birthday boy. Oh, hey Grace. Wait, what'd you call me? Halfway birthday boy. I just got a notification that it's your halfway birthday. <laughs> wow, really? Yeah, really. I figured I'd give you a call and celebrate with you. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Wait, Carl, are you crying? No, I'm just I'm just allergic to air sometimes. I mean, it may be stuck and all. Well, I'm happy for you, Carl. Wait, did you say stuck? Have you been stuck in the Bible all this time? <laughs> yeah, it's been crazy and I'm getting restless. I bet. Well, Carl, don't worry. Your friend is here, so let's have a good time and maybe we will find out how to get you back. Now, do you know where in the Bible you are? Well, I've been wondering a while, but let me see. Parable of the Lost Son. I'm not gonna lie, I smell pigs, <laughs> which scares me. Oh wow, the Parable of the Lost Son. This is one of the most famous stories that Jesus has ever told. Really? What's it all about? 
Well, the story starts in the book of Luke chapter 15. There's a father and two sons. Now, one of the sons decides he wants to leave his father's house and go do his own thing. Oh, wow. That's a big decision. It sure is. But this son was very sure he wanted to get out of there and be his own person. But things didn't go as planned. Really? Really. You see, his father gave him money before he left, and very quickly the son lost all of it. He spent it very foolishly and ended up in a much worse spot than he was before. What happened to him? Well, all over the land there was a food shortage, and this made it very tough for anybody to eat, especially the son. Right, because he had no money. So what did he do? Well, he was so desperate, he decided he would do anything for food or money, so he ended up with a pretty stinky job. He worked with pigs and basically lived with them. Oh, the smell makes extra sense now. It smells pretty gross. It was, and at one point, the son was so hungry, he wanted to eat even the pig slop. Disgusting! Yeah. Right? but no one would even let him eat that. So the son realized just how much he had messed up and he made another big decision. What did he do? He decided to get up and head back home. <laughs> Good luck. No offense, but he's probably better off with the pigs. Why do you say that? After the way he ran away from home like that, I doubt his father would be happy to see his son who wasted all his money and abandoned his whole family. Well, that's probably what the son thought too but it was worth a shot. He couldn't stand to be away any longer. So while he was headed back, he began to rehearse his apology to his dad. Oh, I do that sometimes. Like when I get in trouble, I think about what I'm gonna to say to my parents. Yep, me too. So when the son got close to the house, his father, who was a long ways away, saw him and began to run to his son. Oh snap, someone's in trouble. Daddy is mad. And when the father got to the son, guess what he did? Time out! No, wait! He grounded him for life. No, even worse. He took away his Nintendo Switch. Nope. He hugged him. His father hugged him and kissed him. He yelled back at his servants and told them to get the best robe and a shiny ring and to start preparing a feast because his son who was lost is now found. Oh, so that's what this robe is for. Oh, it's pretty nice. Wait, the dad was happy? Of course. But what about him leaving and wasting all his money? Wasn't the son selfish? He was, but the father's love is so much bigger than his son's mistakes. And Carl, you have to remember, this is just a story, but it's a story about how much God loves his children. And that includes you. Huh, wow, I get it now. We're all kind of the lost son every now and then. We forget what's important and sometimes make bad decisions. But you're telling me God still loves and forgives us? Of course. And you see how the father celebrated his son's return with a robe ring and a feast? The same happens when we choose to follow Jesus. God celebrates us. story, right, girl? Right. Our big idea is something I really needed to know, and that is God celebrates us. So Jada, kids, are you ready to shout it out loud? Well, I know I'm ready. Here we go. One, two, three. God, God celebrates, celebrates us! us. Woohoo! Great job, kiddos. I had such a great time learning today, and I really hope you did too. Oh, and uh, Carl. Yeah, Jada? Good job, but I think it's time for you to head back to your normal life. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> Thanks, Jada. Wow! Whoa! After two long weeks, I'm finally back! Carl, ah! I'm here! Where have you been? I've been looking around for you for the past three and a half minutes. Where have you been? I got stuck in my story, Andy. I'm sorry. Ah, don't apologize. I'm just glad you're back. We can celebrate your half birthday now. <laughs> okay! <laughs> I can't believe it! You remembered! Of course I remembered. And Carl? Yes, Andy? Don't ever leave me again, okay? Okay, weirdo. <laughs> Let's just go get a corn dog or yeah. something. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and tune in next week for a new episode of Pro TV. 
Let's find out what our big idea is this week. We have these three eggs and one of them has a piece of paper with the big idea on it. Let's try and guess which one has it. Is it number one, the blue one? I mean, we guessed that one week one, so it could be it again. Or maybe green, number two? Maybe. Or number three, the yellow one? We actually haven't guessed that one yet. Should we check it out? Let's take a look. We were right, it's in there. Let's see what it says. Did you know we can trust Jesus? Wow, let's say that again together on the count of three. Okay, are you ready? One, two, three. Did you know we can trust Jesus? Great job. Let's take some time to learn our memory verse for April. I'll say it. And I'll repeat it with the actions. And then you can follow it along with us afterwards. Are you ready? Yep. Here we go. But grow. But grow. In the grace. In the grace. And knowledge. And knowledge. Of our Lord. Of our Lord. And Savior. And Savior. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Second Peter. Second Peter. 3.18. 3.18. Nice work, Makila. Thank you. Let's do it together. Okay. And why don't you follow along at home? Are you ready? Here we go. But grow. In the grace. And knowledge. Of our Lord. And Savior. Jesus Christ, 2 Peter 3.18. Awesome job. Great job, everyone. To end us off, let's recap the story today. Jesus appeared to the disciples. Thomas and all the disciples had difficulty trusting that Jesus was really alive again. I mean, Jesus appeared to them twice in this story. But once they saw Jesus and his scars, they knew it had to be true. None of us have that experience of seeing Jesus alive again with our own eyes, but we can believe it to be true, just like Jesus said. Even though we haven't seen it, the words of Jesus in the Bible show us the truth, and he is someone we can always count on. So thankful we have someone we can count on, right? Let's close in prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for sending Jesus. Thank you for being someone we can rely and count on and trust in. We love you, amen. All right, well thanks for joining again for our last week in this series. And we hope to see you again next week for a new series. If you'd like, we have in the link below some discussion questions or a coloring page. If you'd like to access it, just click the link or ask your parents for help. See you again.